Hi, I'm Bill Hawking, Chairman of the Foxborough Conservation Commission, and this is Dave Reese, the Conservation Manager. And we'd like to welcome you to the Lane property here in Foxborough and invite you to go on a walking tour with us around this 80-acre uh, site, which the Conservation Commission is recommending that the town of Foxborough purchase from the uh, Lane family this year. The land consists of three beautiful hay fields, over a mile and a half of shoreline, and some of the prettiest woodland in the town of Foxborough. We're standing on a hillside overlooking the original Lane family homestead located just off of North Street. As your eye moves around, you pick up pots of uh, Crack Rock Pond and beautiful swamp. Looking over these well-sculptured gravel deposits which make up these fields. Nice stand of pine trees leading up to a, a steep slope where the final summer home of Edith and Clifford Lane was located. This whole area is an area that just evokes all sorts of tranquil thoughts and many places for quiet meditation and study of animals and plants and things like that. Looking as we are again back towards the swamp, you could be in 19... 88, or you could be in 1888. Here down by the water we have uh, red maples that are just come into full bloom. Beautiful uh, flowers on these trees that we all look forward to seeing in the spring. Nice rolling green fields. See how the ice age sculptured these, these hills so that they're all rolling and knobbing. This whole topography in, in this area is called knob and kettle. The kettles make up the, the ponds and the swamp areas and the hills are all the rolling knobs. Bill, I just happened to notice that nice stand of red pine. It's kind of unique to the property. It looks like they were planted along the roadside 40, 50 years ago. They're really nice. Yeah, you're right, Dave. That is a, a beautiful stand of, of pine up there. Uh, you don't really see very many like that uh, around in this part of the country now. But uh, that'll uh, make a nice statement for folks when they uh, come driving into the uh, area. Well, Dave, remember back when, when we were kids and we'd all go out and help the local farmer to bring in his hay, and here today they have hay bales all the time. I'll bet there aren't too many people that remember going to a barn and jumping in a hay mow or picking loose hay up off the field like this. And unfortunately, the, uh, the farmer that baled these bales uh, has left them behind. But these fields look to be in good condition and uh, I understand that they use nothing but uh, organic material to fertilize the fields which is good because we won't be increasing the pollutants in the water system here. The Lane property probably has the most unique wildlife areas in the town of Foxborough. Out here we've seen great blue heron, green heron, red-tailed hawks, red-shouldered hawks. 
Falls waterfowl. We've seen buffalo head off of here, hooded meganses, golden eyes, mallards, black ducks. I'm sure that uh, probably there'll be bobolinks in this uh, field this year. Uh, I noticed that uh, over in uh, Sharon that uh, borderland is becoming uh, quite a haven for the local bobolinks which were moving into the unmowed fields. So uh, I'm sure that uh, this year there'll be bobolinks nesting here as well. The fields themselves here could sustain some of the last bluebirds in New England. They've disappeared, and they like an area just like this. They could possibly come back. We've seen mink over at Crack Rock Pond. There's muskrat over in Crack Rock Pond. It's just abundant with wildlife. Everything about the, the land itself is healthy for them. The uh, islands and the, uh, the hills around the edges of the ponds are made up of mostly uh, gravel deposits. This is part of a remnant of uh, an esca, which was an ice tube uh, within the uh, ice shield uh, laid down by the glaciers 15,000 years ago. <clears throat> it turns this uh, into a, a natural uh, setting for a pond, and all a man had to do was come along and uh, put in his dam, and uh, he had what he wanted. These, there are cat briars uh, all along the edge of the pond here, which uh, are very uninviting to those who would land from the uh, water, but they make uh, excellent cover for all of the uh, small animals. In the early 50s and 60s, that's where most of the younger kids in Foxborough learned to swim. They used to have a, a rope swinging out over the water and jump off into the water. I bet Harold Clark swam. <laughs> I bet he did too. <laughs> Harold told me great stories about this when the water was high. He used to walk out on the ice when it was black ice and clear, and he'd walk out there with a bat and hit pickerel and stun them, <laughs> then break the ice open and pick them up. You do it right out there. This acquisition will give us many places to uh, launch small boats and canoes. This uh, dock would make an ideal place for launching a small rowboat, uh, but they're probably will be maybe 10 or 15 different places where canoe launching will be uh, uh, made available, both from the water to the land and from the land to the water. Aside from being a beautiful natural site, the area is located in a very historic part of the town of Foxborough. This farm has been in the history of Foxborough since its inception. The Clifford Lane property sits in a very historic area of Foxborough. North Foxborough was settled before the town was even incorporated. 
way back in the early 1700s. The land before people, before settlers from England came to Foxborough was roved upon and uh, walked upon by the Indians, the King Philip Indians, whom we're all familiar with, were all through the Rentham Foxborough area. In 1660, a court grant gave the land to a settler of Massachusetts, who then eventually sold the, this parcel in North Foxborough to a James Plimpton. James Plimpton sold the land in 1734 to a man named Jedediah Morse. Jedediah Morse lived in the entire North Foxborough area, occupying both sides of what we know as North Street now. His family dammed up Neponset River and built a forge. In later years, Jedediah Morse sold the property on the north side of North Street, the property where the Hamill homestead now is, to Amos Morse, who built and ran a hoe factory. Also in that home at one point was the North Foxborough Post Office. Behind me, you can see a glimpse of the white of that home. Jedediah Morse also had a descendant who built in 1803 the home that is currently occupied by Tom Deacon and Carol Nathan and was formerly occupied by Dot Johnson. This is the yellow house glimpsed through the trees behind me. Jedediah Morse also gave part of his land, or sold it rather, to LaProlet Morse who occupied the White House immediately behind me. LaProlet Morse lived in the house until his death. He. Uh, it was a two-story house at that time, and that particular home burned down in 1882. However, it is said that before, in the decade before it burned down, there were train robbers that lived there and used to hide out in the house, stop the trains, rob them, and then appear to run away, but actually lived in that house. The home, as I said, burned down in 1882. In a few years after that, my great-grandfather, Frederick Stanley Lane, purchased and rebuilt a home on that site. Frederick Stanley Lane loved Foxborough. He was raised here. He in enjoyed this town immensely. He was a state senator, and he was the first president of the Foxborough Federal Savings Bank, which a position which he used for helping other people and trying to help people who are in financial trouble work out their life's problems. Uh, his son, Clifford Lane, inherited this land from Frederick Stanley. Frederick Stanley uh, inculcated in his son, Clifford, a love for the parcel of land. Clifford himself was another person who cared greatly about this community. Clifford was a, a selectman here in town. He was active in the Masons, and he also had been raised here in town. He spent his life as an engineer at the Foxborough Company and had many friends within this community. Clifford uh, and my grandmother, Edith P. Mott, were married in 1913, and together they built a home, a second home up here in the hill, and raised their children. Clifford and Edith, in their later years, wrote and published This Was Foxborough, the history of the community. There have been subsequent histories, too, and we now have three or four volumes available to, to residents of the town to use. Edith herself was a noted musician and music teacher within the community. Both of these people cared deeply about this parcel and taught us to love it, and also spent a great deal of time giving us a, a feeling of the spiritual value of being able to walk in the woods alone and spend some time with uh, oneself. One of the virtues of this parcel is that it is on a high, well-drained location, surrounded on all on three of the four sides of the parcel by some form of water. There's some marsh, there's a mile of shoreline on Neponset Reservoir, and behind me is Crack Rock Pond, which you could almost call Crack Rock Swamp, because it's filling in with sludge and with cat and nine tails to the point where there's very little of a uh, little water left that looks like a pond. 
I'd like to point out that in, 19, in the 1930s, my mother as a child swam in Crack Rock Pond and the water level at that time was up to the railroad tracks. There were hornpout and good fish, good edible fish in that pond. Besides which, it was a good swimming pond and they used to boat in it. That's about it. That's the story of, of the uh, history, brief history and of the family here in North Foxborough. This road is uh, built along the top of a narrow esca, which connects some of the uh, knobs of uh, land here around the reservoir and uh, gives us easy access to all the points of the property. No, Clifford and Edith Lane gave us their wonderful history of Foxborough. This was Foxborough. But you know, Dave, I think that this is Foxborough. Thank you.